Hello and welcome to Masterclass. I am Katla Khomsomi. Being assertive is something that anyone in the working world can learn and use to help the development of themselves and their relationships in the corporate world. Is there a time when this can come across as overconfidence and even arrogance? While well, helping us unpack this is Stephanie Vermeulen, author of Personal Intelligence, Future Fit Now. Stephanie, welcome to the show once again. Hi, Katla. Nice to see you and thank you for having me again. Yes, I appreciate it. Always it is a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you. Stephanie, Assertiveness versus being overconfident. Yes. Where do we draw the line? They're two quite different things. That assertiveness is something that comes from our authentic self. Okay. And overconfidence is something that we can act. Okay. So anybody who is is overconfident is probably over. They're acting the whole situation, which okay. can also come across as being arrogant. Yes. But I think if we start with assertiveness, that mm -hmm. assertiveness is really important in the development of healthy relationships. Okay. Because assertiveness is about boundaries. Yes. And if we want to have any form of healthy relationship relationship it requires boundaries mm. now boundaries very simply when you pushing me too far you're treading on my toes I say ouch that hurts please get off yes. <laughs> and stop doing that yes. and because it's it is working against the relationship now something or the reason that assertiveness is so important is mm. because it puts boundaries in uh, that if we can say no then we can actually reduce our stress levels okay. the most stressed people on the planet are those people who can't say no which makes sense I know. <laughs> <laughs> because they're taking things on and taking things on and taking things on. Now, the problem is when you're doing that, you're getting more and more and more, and I'll use a polite term, you're getting more and more fed up <laughs> that, as you go along. And eventually that's going to come out as a blurt out or a scream or a lose your temper because the anger is building. Now, anger is a primal emotion mm -hmm. and anger is our self-protection in terms of, of go away because you're actually threatening something in my life right now, which is why anger is so hard to control. Yeah. So if we can start t uh, learning to put boundaries in and saying no. Now the easiest thing to do is to work with your emotions. Mm -hmm. Now in the, the back of my book, yes. I have an emotional dictionary okay. and that emotional dictionary will teach people how to work with their emotions. Okay. One of the things that alerts us to a boundary issue is irritation. So if my irritation is building and building, too often what people do because they're afraid to say no for whatever reason, they think it might be career limiting or they give themselves all sorts of reasons. <laughs> <Yes. that. laughs> so instead of saying no, they second guess themselves. Do I say anything? Don't I say anything? If one makes a rule, just a handy rule for oneself, mm -hmm. that as soon as I start feeling Feeling the irritation I'm not going to let it slide ever again okay because then if you, if you make that decision I'm never going to let it slide again you're going to have to force yourself to say no some way or another uh -huh. in every single situation okay. now as soon as you start saying no it doesn't mean you have to say no belligerently often we do that when we're fed up <laughs> so we go no I can't anymore or whatever it is instead of at the moment you start feeling irritated, notice it because mm -hmm. it's a message coming from your system. Mm -hmm. All emotions are messages. Anger is a message. We're not getting our own way. We want to get it before we get to be angry, to being angry. because then our communication is completely different and we'll get a completely different response. The trick with being assertive is to get it at the irritation start. Go, okay, mm -hmm. I notice I'm, I'm irritated now. Okay. It's a boundary issue. Who's stepping on my toes? Where do I need to say no? Okay, I'm being overloaded. So this is what I need to do and to go and negotiate. So it doesn't mean I just say no, I'm not doing it or because that will get a bad reaction. Yes. It's all about negotiation. And if we can get into a negotiation with somebody, it could be a two minute negotiation, for example, mm. we can often come to a new solution that neither of us have thought of before. So that can also then lead to a creative solution, which means I didn't have to put my foot down and not going to get a bad reaction because actually we've now developed something new or a new system or a new way of addressing things or a new way of dealing with things. Mm. So it can lead to a very good outcome if we catch it early. When we're overconfident, it's about I'm going to say no every single time. And can you hear the difference even There's in my a tone? Huge difference in your tone. And it's yeah. going to produce a very different reaction. In business, I always talk about relationships as being functional relationships, which are about relationships at work that work. We don't have to like anybody. Often we don't. Mm -hmm. Often we're very different. We might be completely different in where we come from, in different genders, different ways of doing things, different generations. So we don't need to like people in terms of functional relationships, but we do need to have a reasonable relationship in order to gain their cooperation. Sure. 
Steph, can we teach assertiveness at a very young age? Because I think it must be really difficult when you're an adult and she you're starts. used to saying yes, yes, yes all the time, and then all of a sudden one day you have to start saying no because then people think you have changed and they don't necessarily say, oh, now she's starting to be assertive. Yes. And I think what's important is to teach children from a young age to pay attention to their insides. So mostly what we've taught children is you can only trust your intellect. Our intellect will tell us anything that we want to hear. Yes. <laughs> and, and often does so, which is why the second guessing means that we won't actually confront people because not worth making the fuss right now. That's yes. your intellect talking. Yes. <laughs> yes. I don't want to upset them. Don't want to upset them or don't upset them. Well, things are too stressed at the moment or I'm too stressed, whatever. But we make good excuses. That's your intellect is mm. making excuses. Mm. If we teach children to pay attention to their insights, so even if they are young and they're irritated with us, which is often the case, yes. to teach them to say, um, uh, not you stamping your feet, whatever, to teach them to ask them, are you irritated now? What is happening that you're irritated? What's going on behind the scenes? So to become a child's emotional coach, when we're their emotional coaches, then we can help them to stand up for themselves. So children who are being bullied, for example, are often children who are running away. And girls particularly, females, are taught to be people pleasers. Yes. So if we're trying to people please all the time, you can't people please and say no at the same time, yes. which means that often females battle with this issue. It's not only women exclusively by any stretch of the imagination. Mm. Most people will battle to say no because most people are conflict avoidant. Yes. So most people do anything Thing rather than get into a conflict. Conflict can always be resolved through negotiation, mm -hmm. which doesn't need to be an angry locking of horns. You just go straight into that negotiation. One of the biggest problems is most people don't learn to negotiate. Yes. So we see everybody manipulating around. We grow up seeing people manipulating one another, not negotiating. Most, <clears throat> most corporate politics is just straight manipulation. Mm. And that's when overconfidence can come in. The bully, for example, could be a man you will do it my way, yes. is the bully looking overconfident and the big blow hard or the arrogance, etc. Mm. Arrogance only comes from insecurity. So that's why I have to look much more powerful than I am. I've got to be the big blow hard and make because a big I've got noise. To hide. Because I'm pushing you away so that you can't see what it is that I've got to hide. Yeah. So arrogance or the big blow hard or the bully or the persecutor, we would call it in, in manipulation terms, comes across as being I'm overconfident, you can't question me, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. I'm telling you what to do. And those people get a very bad reaction. Are those people with strong personalities or is that a different group? No, a strong personality doesn't need to be to appear as a big blowhard. Okay. So a strong personality may get a reaction like this. And if you do have a strong personality, then you notice that and, and you can do, I sometimes when I'm training, I've got this big loud voice and people do this, I go, you know, I, I just, I, I don't bite. I just sound like I do. I bark often, but I don't <laughs> bite. And so you can use humor to overcome if you know it's you getting this kind of reaction initially. Mm. But a strong personality has no need to go in and and bully everybody yes. and because they can come from a position of strength that is always coming from insecurity mm -hmm. is that overconfidence needing to look something that I'm not. Steph, we are running out of time. I just want to ask you one last question. You mentioned the thing about the voice. If someone is soft-spoken and very yes. quiet, are they often confused to not being assertive and they are woke over? Or can I still have that soft-spoken type of personality of course, and still be assertive? Of course you can. And quite often people who are soft-spoken, if they're also quieter people, are much more used to doing this. So you pick up a lot more yes. than people like me who talk a lot. <laughs> and it comes, it, the, the assertiveness or that, that strength is your inner strength which shows whether you've got a big loud voice like mine oh, or no. you're softly spoken. And it's what we then, we look at people's energy levels is actually what we're looking at. We don't know what we're looking at, but people who've got lots of energy come across as being personally powerful. Yes. So it doesn't require this big voice or anything like that. The difficulty that often soft-spoken people will have is nobody will strain to listen. Mm -hmm. So soft-speaking speak, people often in a meeting, you may have to just raise your voice a little bit or use your big voice so that you are heard yes. because most people don't listen anyway.
anyway. Mm -hmm. And if they're, if they're battling to hear you, they're not going to make an even bigger effort. So it might, you don't have to develop a big voice like I have. <laughs> that just comes from my, the job that I do. Yes. That, but you might need in a meeting just to use a bigger voice. Uh -huh. I often in training will do this to people so that they know they now have to use a big voice because sidebar discussions are starting here and there because people aren't paying, they're not going to pay attention mm. to listen to somebody who they have to strain to listen to. Stefan, it's always a pleasure having you here. We need a one hour show with you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Thank Get you. Thanks for I joining appreciate me. it. It's a pleasure. And that was Stephanie Formulian, author of Personal Intelligence, Future Fit Now, talking to us about assertiveness versus overconfidence. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you again next time.